I'm Andy, and I'm a rebel fighting for my freedom. I am a saver. I don't believe on throwing stuff away if I can use it later on down the road. Maybe that's why I'm different than most people. I'm Becky, and I'm a housewife. If there's ever a big disaster, we could probably live at least a year without needing for anything. I'm Russ. Andy is my dad, and Becky is my stepmom. I would never call Becky a hoarder. I would never call my dad a hoarder, because they don't like that, and I know this, but yes, they're hoarders. <laughs> I'm Amanda, and my parents are hoarders. One bathroom is filled with stuff. Can't even get in it. The bedrooms are floor to ceiling, front to back, filled with stuff. Lots of books, DVDs, just a hot mess. I would like a house with more cupboard space and more closets, because these houses is zilch on storage. In the living room, the first thing you walk over is a TV. I was taking out a TV that just never got outside. It doesn't bother me to climb over it every day. Not at all. You know, you get used to it. You adapt. It's like big explosion. Like, if you if you touch it or look at it funny, stuff would just fall down. Damn it. I have this stuck way back in here. He'll walk past something and it'll fall or pop out on its own. Oh, He tells everybody, don't step on anything. That's my medicine bag, and I don't know how it got there. It's like, it's not my fault. You're the one who put it on the floor. I know where to step, and I consider myself having a good sense of balance, like a mountain goat. My name is Sergeant Davis. I'm the sergeant of the code enforcement unit of the Marysville Police Department. We entered through the front door, and all I could see was a wall of garbage. There was no kitchen, no living room, no bathroom, no bedrooms, just garbage. I'm here today, pay my weekly visit with them and see what kind of progress they're doing. Do I hate Cop Davis? You damn right I hate Cop Davis. Get out of here. Becky, is there something I can do to help you folks? We're not going to go away. You understand that, right? Yep. Get the hell away from me. Well, Don't even talk to me. Get the hell away from me. We're all here, and we've assembled a lot of professionals to help you and Becky. I want us to try to do what we can so that your dad keeps his home and he and Becky don't go to jail. Officer Davis, do you have anything to add to what we've said so far? I think it's time to begin and uh, work our way towards compliance, I think. OK, so how about if we all get to work? We'll get it going. All right? All right. Yeah, all books say. You want to say it say. all the books? I, I don't know if it's Dad's or Becky's. It could, it could be his stuff. It could be her stuff. Can you take this down? Take it down. My name is Kevin. I'm the neighbor of Andy and Becky. I'm happy to help, as are some of the other neighbors. I've, I'm really impressed with how many neighbors have showed up. Crash. It's got to go, OK? Just like that. Thank you very much, OK? It's got to go like that. This guy looks like he's seen better days. Yeah, let's. Good job, Andy. Deal with it. Yes, to the tables, out the door. This one's heavy, heavy. Your safety is more important than anything in this pile. Delicious. This is one of the most dense cards I've ever been in, because when you pull things, it's like an avalanche. Really bad.
have the kitchen done, the bathroom clear, people are working on the hallway, and he gave us permission to clean the laundry room. Um, what's the update? So we need to get them another exit out of the house. They have to have another egress. That front door is the only way in and out of this house. Excellent. We could, we could tear into this. We could get this done in no time. Yeah. All right. Sound good? So you yep. open the door, Russ? OK. Yeah. <laughs> Juice. I don't even know. Just dump it. You got a train load, a box car full. Dump it. This thing, dump it. Over the course of the last few days, there's been this coming together. There's been making peace, uh, building friendships and connections, which has expanded out to the community as well, which is remarkable. I have never called Sergeant Davis Sergeant Davis. He's always been Cop Davis to me. <laughs> no, that's out. He is Sergeant Davis. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Davis, I'm sorry for what I've done and said and what I thought about you. I accept your apology, and I also apologize to you if I uh, ever said anything uh, that uh, was incorrect uh, or uh, in any way offended you. Sergeant. Andy. It was nice to, to hear Andy apologize and, and to be able to speak civilly with him uh, for the first time in all these months. Sergeant Davis is a friend of mine. We can actually all four stand in one room. But at least they have access from the front door. They have access in here. They can actually start cleaning the kitchen, get the kitchen used. They have a way to get out of the back of the house through the garage. Right. There's still a lot to do in the garage. We've created a good living space. I think they can function normally. I can't speak on what's inside of the bedrooms. They still have a lot to do. This house is technically at this point is really not livable, but they've already been living in this when it was much worse than this. Vika, what do you think? Where do we where do we stand right now with all this whole process? I got word from my crew that 40 trucks left the premises and a total of 160 tons were taken off of this property, 160 tons. I can't fault anybody who allows 160 tons of trash, recycle, and disposable items to leave their property. I'm very proud of Andy and Becky, and though they have a long way to go, they've gone leaps and bounds above what I anticipated for this week. Well, you've done a great job. 160 tons is a lot of stuff that got hauled out of here. The estimate is it's probably 60 plus more tons that's got to get out of here at some point. And um, we want to work with you on that. As of right now, technically you're not in compliance still. You still have ways to go, but you are so much closer. I'd like to add something, Andy. Um, uh, in early January, we had a brief meeting and we talked about coming into compliance and if we could not, that the city was going to move towards the abatement portion and all that stuff. Well, I, I just want to put your mind at ease that uh, that is not, no longer a concern uh, as of today. We're going to continue to work with you folks and, and uh, try to move this thing forward. City officials, you just don't find city officials as you, as you poor. Um, and the rest of these people, their hearts are just tremendous. This is such a clean house. <laughs> I tried. I'm BG, and I'm retired, and I'm the wife of Lee. I'm Lee, and I'm BG's husband. This house is over 100 years old. It's elaborate. It's a beautiful house to begin with because it's Victorian, it's Queen Anne style. People on the outside don't know we have a long ways to go on the inside. I'm Laura and BG and Lee are my parents. 
Their house is just things everywhere. Once you're through the door, it's just overwhelming. Well, I know that I didn't have things that I might have wanted when I was growing up that set me off on a pattern of trying to get those things and trying to make sure my kids had those things. Oh, my current relationship with Lee is, 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 is not good. We are legally separated. It's an untenable situation. Yeah, there's a lot of friction. I feel that he sabotages whatever I do. My wife has a certain number of axes to grind. Oh, that was a nice thing to <clears throat> say, as usual. And is very good at grinding them. Lee has 99.99% .99 control. He's a complete control freak. Yeah, hold this. Here. No. Dump him in. He actually boarded up every doorway. I think that there is a long history of disagreements. We had a big fight. She did file for divorce. I intended to be married until I died. A divorce was never part of anything I would consider. She doesn't understand divorce. She doesn't understand community property. She doesn't understand any of that. I'm not happy living in this situation. We are financially bound to the house, and I cannot leave and he cannot leave. There's no ability for one person to go somewhere and live somewhere else because the person who's remaining cannot pay for the house. If we get a divorce, whatever financial planning I was able to do, it'll screw it up. I guess I would say there is a crisis. I think if we don't get this mess cleaned up, that it's gonna destroy me, and or it will destroy Lee. I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. We're here, we're ready to go. I've got 20 people, go, go, go. It's brand new and look at it now, it's got a thing on it. It was pushed and shoved. Yeah, we need to set some standards. We've got the house locked now. We need to get something straight because I'm not going to glue and replace everything I own. I'm Dr. Robin Zazio. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and I specialize in OCD and compulsive hoarding. We haven't even started yet and they're telling us that things are broken. Well, be careful of this and the guy's here. I come back and then this is destroyed. We've been working, what, 15 minutes maybe and the whole process is stopped. I've had it, I've said be careful. They've locked their house, we can't get in, we can't do the work, there might not be a project here. Dorothy, are you in here? All right. I have to lock that. I have explicit instructions. <sighs> well, so. they can't, we can't lock them out of the house. But they're not to be in here without him. <sighs> I'm, I'm just telling you what I'm told. I'm not... No, no, I I'm understand. I'm not going I, against I, it. I understand. Lee? Yes? We can't get stuff out of the house if the front door is locked. We can't have the front door locked because we can't it. get in and out. We're trying to do a service for you. You've got to give us a little bit. You want to sell stuff. You've been talking about doing a yard sale. Well, guess what? If you choose to say yes, I have an entire team who's ready to post signs right now. Can they sell it? And they can sell it for you. Works for me. Oh my God, I don't believe it! No way! Hey, Dorothy! Hey, Dorothy! But at the end of the day, we want to know whether it's really selling. If it's not, then you need to come clear that yard sales aren't the way for you. Donate free. What would you. Free. Okay. You think you could take the trampoline with you? If I come back, go ahead, take a spin on it. It'll be great. Okay. For all these years, Lee's been talking about having a yard sale. And this is his long plan that he's had forever. And this was going to be the reason why they've got the hoard, because he's ready for the yard sale. 
He's not at the yard sale. He's not even there. And then every once in a while, he appears and takes something back out and puts it back in the yard. Not a very good yard sailor. <laughs> Okay, welcome everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, first things first. We're not here to do garage sales or yard sales. That's the first time in history that we've ever done that. What we were trying to actually do was to prove a point that most of your stuff was not stuff that people were gonna purchase. It was a seven hour yard sale. We had 93 customers. We sold virtually nothing. Going forward, we want to give you a living room today that you can host your grandkids in, trick-or-treating, whatever is coming up. You want up. to do that, and I do know that, and I do appreciate okay. that. Works for all of us. Perfect. And you're shooting the You have time for that. God. I told you how many times? A thousand? You need to deal with your stuff because you're going to complain all night and I'm going to have to listen to it. Listen to me now. Yes. These are the ones you said you were keeping. Do you have to keep those? You got to deal with this, OK? We've had five fights in the last hour because he won't help me. First, this has been a problem for 40 years. It was in our son's room. I wanted it to get gone. He takes something like this and puts it in my hallway. Then he puts boxes on it, then he puts more boxes on it, and then furniture and boxes and furniture and boxes. Nothing goes where it belongs, so, and then nothing makes sense, and you can't get to anything. That's correct. I want this out, I want this out. And he knows, I've just argued with him for an hour. He won't touch anything, but he wants to keep the stuff. I can't get any help. They won't help Okay, you. oh no. Lee and BG should have gotten rid of at least 15 truckloads worth of stuff. They got rid of two. We cleared the stairways, we cleared the hallways, so that if there's a fire, they actually can get the fire department in here. That was my mission. Anything beyond that was like, woohoo! And just so happened we gave them a living room back. And it's beautiful. Let's go into a living room where you could have some holidays and family. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Good job. I'm I'm really concerned. I think it's great that we cleared a room, but that's all we did. All we did was move all your stuff downstairs. We really didn't do anything for you. I, I feel you did. I appreciate that. My concern is, is that you guys are still sticking to your stuff. You're not letting it go. On top of that, there is so much tension in this relationship between the two of you. And even though we've cleared a space, it's also cleared a space for the two of you to argue more, to bicker more, and to get into the issues more. So it's gonna be critical that you follow up with some therapy because you guys aren't gonna survive it. I hope that you guys can make a commitment to keep this space off limits to any box. Well, I do need to put back in the living room whatever belongs in the living room that's in the yard. Dr. Okay. Zazio, I call it a clutter-free zone. Yeah. I'm certain that there's going to be a piece of, a couple pieces of furniture to go back in there. Yeah, it's pretty barren. The hallway and the stairs yes. must not have a stitch on it. The hallway looks very lonely and, you know, just, you know, not happening. You put one thing down, it it's like it breeds another and breeds another. I am really worried about Lee and BG. If they don't follow through with aftercare services, it's only a matter of time before they bring in more stuff because they don't have any insight. I don't believe that they're going to be successful. I'm Connie, and I am a stay at home mom. I'm Ed, and I'm a machinist. Oh, yeah. Way better. Ed and I met because of a Halloween party that I was throwing. And we are Halloween freaks ever since. Oh, my word. We love Halloween. In the amount of stuff we have, I would say 50% is 
Halloween. I have a hearse because I'm such a Halloween nut. I would say I'm a hoarder. I would say I'm a hoarder. I'm Vicki, I'm Connie's sister. Connie hoards smaller ticket items and bigger ticket items. It's just total chaos over there. I'm Fisher, I'm 14, and Connie and Ed are my parents. I've been living like this ever since I was born. I'm Hunter, I'm 17 years old, and Ed and Connie are my parents. Oh, I'm embarrassed to live in the house. I try to escape, I try to leave. Because Fisher is on the spectrum, he really needs things tidy and orderly. I go into the bathroom because of all the dust, all the smells, but most of the time it's to just get away because that's the only place I'm able to actually have some decent quiet. We only have one bathroom in our house. It's Fisher's place to escape. If he's in there and Hunter and I have to tinkle, we run outside and go where the dog goes in a bush. You just kind of make do with what you can. We have a huge tent outside. I'm always joking about it. And we call it the tent of shame. And we call the basement the pit of despair. Over the last six years, they've found five different types of cancer in 12 different places. I just had my 13th surgery. I've come to realization that stuff comes and goes, but time doesn't. And it's more important to have a relationship with my boys and my wife than it is to have stuff. And I need Connie to get on the same level as I am. If things don't change, I will leave and I'll take my brother with me. I don't want him to live there anymore. Knowing that, it breaks my heart, but if that's what he chooses to do, I'd support him, and I'd probably go with him. Sorry. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name's Corey Chalmers. I'm an extreme cleaner that specializes in biohazard and hoarding. Do each one of you want a better house? Do you want a better life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Is there anyone here that says this stuff is more important than their family? No, no. I don't. So are you guys ready to get a clean house? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get to it. Come on in. It's a lot. Is it scary? Talk to me. I don't know what to do. I can see this, the, the panic in you. I know. This it's is not really hard. going to make your life better. This is what's holding your life back. None of this is worth it because if we don't do it, the ship's going to sink. Okay. Think of it that but way. But then watch me do this. Okay, uh -huh. so I'm looking through here and. What are you looking for? This. Why? Because it fits on the top okay. of my other thing. What if you lost it? What if? What if this was gone? She's about to lose her family, and she's focusing on one lid in her kitchen. This is beyond unbelievable at this point. You have just one and a half days to keep the ship from sinking, OK? Mm -hmm. You've tried it this way, you guys. You've tried it this way. Yeah. Let's try it a different way. And it's going to change your relationship. You just have to trust us. All right? want this? Trash it. <laughs> Unneeded. Donate? Yeah. Give it to a kid in need. Hunter and me weren't allowed to clean our rooms because my mom wouldn't let us decide what to throw away because she would think that, oh, you guys still need this. And we really don't. Hunter, should I have this sucker that's been in here for about two years? Go ahead. It won't kill you. 
This is about the first time me and my brother have actually gotten time to bond. Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> and then we even got a lot of work done, which I'm really happy for. That's funny. I, actually, I'd like to bring her out here right now. So for a day and a half, we've literally been filling up boxes and just taking them to the backyard. I needed Connie to see how many boxes we have because these are gonna have to go somewhere or she's gonna have to make very quick decisions at this point to let them go. If you can't make any more decisions, like right now, this is what's gonna get loaded into the basement that we just cleaned out. Oh my gosh. Wow. Feels like somebody's trying to kill me. You should just vote on it out of the four of us. You always do that and I'm odd men out. If you wanna talk about it, talk about it. If you wanna start going through boxes, go through boxes. Yeah, I've right. snapped. Don't Mom, talk to me. I, I don't want to talk to you. to you. Mom. No. Mom. No. I was beyond pissed. It's just things. You can't make a choice for her. Hell, I don't see why not. Remember, it's just junk. I just feel bullied. Connie did the best she could do. She couldn't make statements like get rid of everything. We don't want to leave you with a nervous breakdown yeah, when we please. leave. That is not the goal. <laughs> We still have a full basement. We still have a full circus tent. And we still have a full master bedroom. The upside is the living room, kitchen, and the boys' room are clean, functional, and safe. Now they can come together as a family in those areas and hopefully make some new memories. All right, you guys, we made it. So the goal is that you guys learned enough to continue on with this process okay. until it's done. So are you guys ready to see the house? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's go inside. Going. That's amazing. Brings back a lot of good memories. And I'm still struggling, but I'm grateful. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this looks great. Where are we at with our family crisis, the reason we were called? people wanting to leave. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hoarding is an illness. It is. And I'm going to be there to take care of her. And I'll do what it takes to get her through this process. She didn't take baby steps. She took leaps. So that makes me really happy. I shouldn't be mad. I'm excited. And I'm excited for our relationship. I'm falling in love again with the girl that I first met. I'm Dorothy, and I am a hoarder, big time. So is my husband. I'm Dave, and I am a hoarder. I love David. Don't forget to do that garbage job. When I saw that he hoarded, I knew then I met my match. Dorothy is the love of my life. We were a match made in heaven, definitely. It is a love story about two people who love to collect too much. <laughs> this is a hoarder's paradise. We both feel that way. Yeah, when we got together, well, we'd go to the thrift stores or grocery store and shop up. We hoarded. And together, it builds up pretty fast. It gets out of our control. I'm Christy, and Dorothy is my mom, and my stepdad is David. <sighs> Definitely having two people who like to accumulate things is a problem, because now you have so much stuff accumulated outside and inside. You know, how do you control that? My mom has a lot of health issues. Her mobility is limited. She's got scoliosis and DJD, which is disintegrating joint disease. The vertebrae in her neck are gone. The muscle pain in the neck, this will lighten up, but the compression is like it hurts all the time. She falls a lot. And right now, she falls into the piles a lot. I have fallen in here in the last month six, seven times.
I have been with her to the neurologist, and he basically said, if you fall one more time, you're gonna be paralyzed. I could fall again, and I probably would be paralyzed. I've been real close. I am worried about her. I feel it's partly my fault, of course, that I let it build up, and that's why it's gotta go. We gotta get it cleaned up. I'm scared to death I'm gonna fall. Get this cleaned up, we'll have a home again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Matt Paxton. I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. We're here to clean. There's enough time for us to clean the house properly. To make the house safe, I have to pull everything out. Dorothy has some serious disabilities. Every movement she makes, I think she's going to fall over and just crack in half. We've got to get this house safe for her. If she allows us to clean this house, she will. All right. It's easier said than done, <laughs> OK? You guys ready to get started? We're ready. Hey, Grandma. Grandma. Your family is here to help you get your house in order. Are you going to let them get rid of your stuff? I don't care. I'm not doing this. Okay. I don't care what you do. I don't want them to do it. Dorothy, we're, we're on limited time here. Oh. we got to focus. It's very clear this is going to be challenging. You can't be oh. joyful in a home like this, Dorothy. That's no, for sure. You got to do what you want. Get busy. Okay. Get it done so I can get right. on with it. That's what I wanted to hear. All get right. busy. Miss Dorothy, over here. Here's the deal. We're going to separate the food, and we're going to separate the clothes. And we're just going to see what kind of volume we have. OK. I got a box right here. I want to see you start throwing stuff away. OK? I have to do that? Oh, no, that's putting salt in the wound. Dorothy, I'm literally standing in trash, and I, I think... I know you are. So I think that there's a lot of stuff that you could throw in this box right now. Can I decline? Dorothy's having a lot of trouble getting rid of things. You can't throw away any of your stuff? Dorothy, you have to. No. If we don't pick up the pace, my fear is we're not going to have this house in order, and she's not going to have a safe place to live. Yesterday was really easy. It was clothes and food. Today, we're going to finish this room completely, and we must finish this dining room, kitchen, family room area. All right, you ready to roll? All right, well, let's rock. That goes. Okay. The stove back there in the corner goes. Okay. Dorothy wants to get involved now. Is that garbage? This is 3,000 pounds Oh, you're trash. kidding. I'm not kidding you. Man, she's letting it go. Dorothy has made the turn. And she said, I don't need it. None of the stuff really matters. You seem to be doing pretty good, actually, with us taking stuff out. I'm mistake. We did an enormous amount of work on this hoard. Believe it or not, 32,000 pounds of trash was thrown away. It's really awesome to see this entire family put the past to the side and focus and help. They worked with us side by side the entire time. It was like having four extra people on a crew. I am beat and tired. It was a lot of work, a lot of cleaning. I never thought in three days that we would have pulled this off. When the family participates, we're able to do miracles. Oh, this is pretty serious. Uh, Dorothy had a power chair, actually two power chairs, hover rounds. And riding around on those decks with no rails and a bunch of different levels and elevations, she could fall pretty easily. So by putting some ramps in there, we made it easy so she can go right from the driveway out of her car all the way into the rear door that we put in, gave her an extra foot of clearance to be able to get in and out of the house safely. We built ramps, we got new doors, we got entire rooms empty. And Dorothy's able to move around in her house safely. We have had amazing transformation this week. Our main goal was to make this house safe for you. And I'm gonna tell you, without all these four women, 
on my left, no way it would have happened. And that's the truth. I know that. Yep. It's okay. <laughs> Why don't you turn your chair around and you can see what we've done. I can't believe this. <laughs> Dorothy was genuinely grateful. Oh, it's beautiful. There you go. She was riding up the ramp, having a great time. Slow ah. down. Ah. 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 Oh my God. She was laughing, she was giggling, intermittently crying because she was so happy. Oh, I can't believe <gasps> What do you think? <sighs> The results in the house are unbelievable. It's like a miracle. Dorothy and I are going to be happy in our home again. I love you. Uh -huh. uh, oh. If I get any happier, I'll get put in jail. Unreal. We were unsure in the beginning how this family was going to work together and if we were going to resolve this crisis, and we did. It doesn't always happen this way. It's nice to have a happy ending where the couple stays together in a home and it's a safer place for them to be. Thank you, Lord, for letting life turn out the way I thought it would be. I'm fuzzy, I'm an artist, musician, and all around slacker. I started playing music around 89, I think, when I played bass. Fred played whatever, percussion, not necessarily drums. I got a lot of dots on my face now. <laughs> I'm Fred and fuzzy is my husband. This place looks like crap. <laughs> We have a lot of comics, DVDs, VHS, beta tapes, even laser discs, LPs, you know, vinyl, if anybody knows what that is anymore, um, musical instruments, toys, toys, toys. Recording is good because uh, you have that thing that you need when you need it. <laughs> when I see something wacky out, you know, I'll... Just grab it and think, oh, maybe, maybe that'll look really good next to that one-eyed baby doll. <laughs> Our marriage is great. We're both easygoing, laid back, and we do have a lot of the same interests. When Fred and I met, I had mannequins, she had mannequins. <laughs> They're shaped like people. They're built like people. Frankly, I can't really wear a lot of the things that mannequins probably can wear these pants at the thrift store, you know, I'm not gonna wear those things, but she will. <laughs> yeah, we both love weird. I'm Jay, and I'm Fuzzy's brother. I don't think I could live with all that stuff around me. It's hard for me to understand where they're going with their lives. Mmm, smells great. Seems like you usually want to move up, and it uh, didn't seem like they had any motivation to do that. <sighs> Yeah, we're kind of nonconformists. More uh, artistic, I guess. I'm Chuck, and Fuzzy's my son. I'd like to retire. I'm 79 years old. But I still have to work to support my son. A nice house before they trashed it up. They were supposed to pay so much a month, but they never did pay anything. They don't expect us to pay them back for the house. Dr. Doom is in the room. But what we certainly shouldn't have been relying on them for is the bills. By not trying to get a job, not trying to work, they've abuse the relationship with my parents, taking advantage of that. I love them. Sometimes I just haven't liked them very much. We pay all the utilities, and uh, we got tired of supplying Fuzzy and Fred with money to live on. It's time for them to start paying for things on their own, be responsible. 
Rules. Who likes rules? <laughs> they need to change some things. It's time for them to grow up and cut the cord for my parents. I am going to cut them off right away and let them be on their own. If my parents cut me off, I would, you know, be living in the van again. I don't know. We would be homeless. We're just going to start at the back of the yard, and we're going to go okay. to the back door. we got 20 minutes to make decisions. I'm Matt Paxton. I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. The challenges we have with Fred and Fuzzy is that all of their stuff is actually fascinating. Their ambition is pretty good, but their follow through absolutely sucks. Nope. You're holding on to that? Yeah. You're holding on to that? Yeah. You got a good ring. I'm leaning towards keeping this barrel. Keep or trash? We're keeping it. Please, trash. Oh. They need to realize when they have an idea for something. Bird bath, huh? <laughs> A certain amount of time goes by, and the project that they had in their mind hasn't even begun to start. Maybe it's never going to see its end. This, this is what you back. guys do, though, right? I mean, you guys created it's this, right? It's among the things we yeah, do. I, mean. I want to make sure I give proper credit to what's important to them. But it's a bloody, scabby mannequin. Some people will look at that and they'll say it's trash. Yeah. Every item that you bring in this house should fit equal in, equal out. So if you bring a new mannequin in, mm -hmm. guess what? The old mannequin has gotta go out. Gotta right, go out. right. Bucket full of uh, broken <laughs> vibrators. <laughs> Uh huh. I mean, I mean people, you don't. It's not every day that you see a bucket full of vibrators. People put silver plastic apples in a bowl on their yeah, table yeah. all the time. In your mind, there's yeah. so much potential in this stuff, but you know you're never gonna get to it. Probably not. They just don't know if this is gonna be something they're gonna keep as a centerpiece on their table, or are they gonna throw it all away? We'll not have a whole lot of space down. Here. Yeah. What goes down here? Um. Stuff that I work on. When you say stuff that I work on. What's, we need to put that into more of a organized um, art projects that can't be done upstairs. What can I get rid of? Let's just start with that. Um, probably this tote. What's going on up there, guys? It's a record player. How many record players we got in the house? Quite a few. How many do we have between the warehouse and here? I like five or six. All right, this is not working. It's taking too long. I'm going to say what, I, what I'm going to say. This is going to come across rude, but I need you to look at me. You're 43 years old, man. Like, how many hobbies can you have? Like, you got to get it as many as I can. No, it's not funny, man. You got to get a damn job. I do like, pay for the. Pay for everything. Yeah. Then why is your dad working I'm still? I'm going to pay him back. What are you talking when, about? When are you going to pay him back? Uh, I'm going to sell my motorcycles. I mean. Uh, like no, I want you to take responsibility and stop having all these damn hobbies, man. Well, the hobbies aren't my problem. What is your problem, then? Uh, probably getting rid of stuff. I mean, this is just life, man. Gotta yeah. pay bills. Throwing right? out the that I can sell to make money is not gonna help me pay the bills. The mess concerns me but the mental state is what really concerns me. Mm -hmm. Laissez faire, hey, whatever, dude. The priorities are just all yeah. messed up. And I look at your dad, I'm like, why is there an old man working with us right now? Yeah. Yet alone working every single day to support this. I think when you kicked him in there, he's he's just starting to throw things away. Scrap, scrap, uh, scrap. This is trash. Give me a little encouragement here. <laughs> You need someone to kick you in the butt. That's why I did it. I was looking at him and I was like, well, you know what? If this is my brother, this is what I would think. But you know what you did as soon as you got pissed at me? Started to You got rid of a lot of stuff. <laughs> what are we looking at? I mean, total? Yeah, about 100 bucks so far. 100 bucks yeah, so for, far. Yeah. This cart here? 50 bucks for yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. okay. How about 20 bucks? That'll do. All right. They might offer you 75 bucks for wow. the steps. 
Okay. What else you got, Chris? You need some, uh, some company? Some mannequins, yeah. <laughs> We've got everybody working hard at the house. We've got maids, painters, organizers. We're gonna try to set up a space that they can truly enjoy and give them a fresh start at home. You guys like your stuff. <laughs> you like your house. We did a little bit of makeover with your existing stuff. All right, you guys ready to go see it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, right, do it. let's do it. <laughs> All right. What do you guys think? That's awesome. This is exactly where we were trying to head. What do you think, Chuck? Oh, I think it's, I think it's great. I, I just can't believe it. I see things that I didn't know was here before. <laughs> well, especially the floor. I want to stress, we don't want you to change who you are. We just want you to be a little more buttoned down so we can enjoy who you are. I can walk over here and I can walk over here. We got the broken vibrators. You can still be yourselves without being held back. All right. You guys did far more than I think any of us thought Absolutely. would happen. I wouldn't have expected this. Mm. You guys did a good job. Thank exactly. you. Fuzzy and Fred have grown up a lot this week. We did grow up a little in this experience because, you know, that's what people do when they're growing up, is they handle their stuff. <laughs> I think that we will be handling our stuff much more effectively and more often and in more areas. <laughs>
my gosh! It's incredible. There are no walls to see, none. <laughs> How am I gonna organize that? I have no clue. We've got all this stuff out here and Vance has been standing for about an hour. Yeah. He just watches. Is that normal behavior? Pretty much. Okay. Vance is totally resistant to this process. He has not done one single thing. She's doing it all alone. Special box, half price, please. Garbage. Did you just ask him if you could make the decisions? He's going to take a hell of a lot more consoling than I can give him at this point. He is seeing his life disrupted. Uh, is there something some... that you'd rather us be doing? No, no, this is all very entertaining and... Uh, well, we're I'm... not here for entertainment. I'm not fooling around. I'm here for a real reason. Vance definitely thinks this is not a crisis. Vance can't see how books can be a danger to anybody. Books are not dangerous. Books don't bite. Books are not snakes. What I'm here to do is actually change your life. But do you want your life to be changed? Well, at age 60, a new life is probably an unaffordable luxury. How about a space for your home where you don't have the city of Chicago knocking at your door? You always have the city of Chicago knocking at your door. OK, so why are we here then? Yeah, real estate interests. Well, we'll try and defend them off. We'll see how successful we are okay. or not. It's really nasty to be working on a job where you are totally unappreciated. OK. Claire's plan at this point is that she is going to let go of as much as she possibly can. Do you go to accommodate what her husband has? I'm Dr. Suzanne Chabot, and I'm a specialist in obsessive compulsive disorder and hoarding. Please go. Yeah, this whole pile goes. These go. Right here. That stays. She's very protective of him. She is not going to push him to get rid of things. That's Vance's. Everything in here is his. All these are his. Because Vance is ill. Vance can't take stress on his heart. This is chaos to him. He needs to sit down quietly by himself to keep his heart healthy. Bye-bye. That's Vance's on the bottom. Yeah. That last big book is Vance's. So I that... love seeing Claire love her husband so much that she's willing to give up some of the things that are important to her. Goodbye. Goodbye. But it's going to come to a point where he's going to have to let go of some things for that house to be safe. So here's what happened. The tallest bookshelf of all totally fell on my guys. I know, that was wedged in there. With this. I know. And this. If you were my mom, I would say to you, I got to get a stretcher in here in case Vance has a heart attack. There's no rule. Maybe it's a good thing that this bookshelf fell down on us and not you. But no more. You have to take care of yourselves. So here's my concern, Dr. Chabot. Where is Vance? Just tell me why he's not here. I know you, can, you don't want to speak for him. I know you love him, no, but why I, isn't uh... he here? Okay. All right. Vance, take a little seat with your wife. If she saw that the reason why you died, or felt that the reason why you died was because the room was so hoarded they couldn't get to you, Claire, you would have a very hard time knowing that maybe he, he died because of it. If it came down to that, absolutely. We're going to make the staircase safe, take some of those dangerous things out of the downstairs, some of the piles and stuff. We're going to sort them. You've got a lot of books mixed in there that that I know you can get rid of. That's exactly what I like. I, that's where you need to go. No, no flipping. Come on. 
We don't have time for flipping. Uh, Travel subject. Out. At least now he's down there with Dr. Chabot and books are coming out that he is giving away. The magazines go, the, a lot of these reference materials go. That can go, that can go, that can go. I think Vance actually has had a breakthrough. I'm guilty of thinking that the answers in life come from books and they decidedly do not. I think that's really, really important what you just said. Just please remember that when you're going through your books. This is books in print. Out, out. Those, this goes um, out. Uh, trash, out. I really think that we're looking anywhere between 200,000 to 500,000 books. There are 26 rooms in this house, but we only cleared two. But we sent out about 10 tons worth of books. Well, thank you anyway. I'll take that from you anytime. You lead the way, Dorothy. Oh. Okay, we're coming in. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God, look at this, oh wow. Oh, we have a living room and it's gorgeous. Oh, it, it, it's unbelievably great. I'm going to keep what I absolutely want and get rid of what I absolutely do not. This is gonna be an ongoing process. This, I think this is a huge positive change. Oh, this is just fantastic. Hi, thanks for being a fan of Hoarders. And subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.